بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين These are some exercises about section 2.6 which is about horizontal asymptotes and limits at infinity Can the graph of y equals f of x intersects a vertical asymptote? And the question to this, uh, the answer to this question is no, because whenever uh, there is a horizontal asymptote, uh, sorry, a vertical asymptote, for example, uh, the function y equals ln x, we know that x equals to zero is a vertical asymptote. The graph will never intersect the vertical asymptote because the function is not defined at zero. So the function is not defined at the, this value of x. So uh, never uh, crosses the graph never never crosses a vertical asymptote. Can it intersect a horizontal asymptote? While the horizontal asymptote, uh, the definition of the horizontal asymptote, the limit of the function when x approaches infinity or negative infinity is equal to a number l. So, for example, if y equals to zero is a horizontal asymptote, all what we need is when x approaches infinity. So, before that, when x is negative two, for example, the graph could cross the horizontal asymptote, could cross again the horizontal asymptote. But finally, when x approaches infinity, it should approach the function, should approach L. So crossing or intersecting the horizontal asymptote is not uh, uh, is not in contradiction with the definition of the horizontal asymptote. All what we need is this part. When x approaches infinity, what happens to f of x? Before that, a horizontal the definition is not concerned. Type so. Uh, it can intersect a horizontal asymptote, yes, and uh, this is illustrating. And by the way, uh, if you ever want to find the intersection points between the horizontal asymptote and the graph, uh, then you have the function y equals f of x and the asymptote y equals zero. So you put them equals to each other. So in this example, uh, you put f of x equals to zero and you will find all the intersection points between the horizontal asymptote and the graph. Also, of course, it doesn't have to be, uh, and not every graph intersects the horizontal asymptotes, but it could happen, okay, it could happen. How many horizontal asymptotes can the graph of, this fun of the function have? Well, it could have zero, one, or two. Uh, for example, the graph of this function, x equals to 1, y equals x, y equals x, has no horizontal asymptote, no horizontal asymptote, because the limit when f of x, uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is infinity, and the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity is negative infinity, so there is no number here. So no asymptote, while uh, the graph of the exponential function, the exponential function has a vertical asymptote because the limit of e x, this is y equals e x, when x approaches negative infinity is zero. So the line y equals to zero is a horizontal asymptote while the limit of e x when x goes to infinity is infinity so there is only one horizontal asymptote of this uh, function while the function tan inverse x tan inverse x we have seen the graph of this function in the lecture uh, this is the graph of tan inverse x now the limit of tan inverse when x approaches infinity is pi over 2 so that's why 
the line y equals pi over 2 is a horizontal asymptote and the limit of tan inverse x when x approaches negative infinity is negative pi over 2 so a y equals negative pi over 2 is another horizontal asymptote and that's all we have limit when x approaches infinity and limit when x approaches negative infinity these are the two limits that we have uh, in the definition of the horizontal asymptotes so this is the maximum number of horizontal asymptotes a function or a graph of a function could have so either 0 1 or 2 well this is the graph of a function g of x and we need to find the limit of g of x as x approaches infinity so here you concentrate here x approaches infinity where is the graph this is the graph it goes to the line y equals to 2 so the limit when of g of x as x approaches infinity is is 2 okay it goes up and down it becomes closer from up above and below until uh, it it approaches very closely the line y equals to 2 as x goes to infinity so from here immediately this is a, a limit at infinity okay this is limit at infinity so we will have a horizontal asymptote the line y equals to 2 is a horizontal asymptote because the limit of the function when x approaches infinity is 2. The limit as x approaches negative infinity, well, uh, this is x approach negative infinity. The function goes, uh, uh, approaches this line, which is the line y equals negative 1. So the limit is negative 1, and the line y equals to negative 1 is a horizontal asymptote because this is limit at infinity well when x approaches 0 so this is x this is 0 let x approach 0 from the right the graph goes below to negative infinity approach x from the left the graph also goes to negative infinity so this is an infinite limit once you have an infinite limit, then it will give you an e the equation of a vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote in this case is the line x equals to zero. So x equals to zero will be a vertical asymptote as we see in the graph. When x approaches two from the left, what is the limit? So this is two approach 2 from the left the function goes to negative infinity so and this is uh, an infinite limit so immediately the line x equals to 2 is a vertical asymptote uh, also when x approaches 2 from the right the function goes to infinity uh, because x equals to 2 is a vertical uh, asymptote Sketch the graph of an example of a function f that satisfies all of the given conditions. Okay, uh, we have f of 2 is 4, so this is uh, the point 2 and 4. Uh, f of negative 2 is negative 4, so this is the point negative 2 and negative 4. The limit when x approaches negative infinity. So now uh, x goes to negative infinity. f of x goes to what? To zero. This means that this line, which is the line y equals to zero, is a horizontal asymptote. And we can draw the curve like this. So now as x approaches infinite, negative infinity, we can see that the graph f of x approaches zero. Uh, well, f of x approaches 2 as x approaches infinity. So the line y equals to 2 is also a horizontal asymptote, another asymptote of this, another horizontal asymptote of this function. And it, it, the function here, 2, 4, so I can just bring it 
like this, okay? So this would be uh, a possible graph of the function f of x. Here, the limit of f of x as x approaches zero is infinity. So immediately the line x equals to zero is a vertical asymptote. Uh, also, the line x equals to three is a vertical asymptote because these are infinite limits. Uh, and here, limits at infinity. So the line y equals to one, y equals to negative one are horizontal asymptotes. So you can say that the line y equals one and the line y equals negative one are horizontal asymptotes and the line x equals to the, the three is a vertical asymptote and the line x equals to zero is also a vertical asymptote and when x approaches zero f of x approaches infinity so Uh, we can say that the graph could go like this, okay? It could go like this. This is a possible graph. Uh, when x approaches zero from the left, it goes to infinity. And when x approaches negative infinity, negative infinity, it goes to one or right. So this is not, not correct. Actually, it has to approach y equals to one. So the graph would be like this, okay? So here, let us make this, okay? So the graph would be like this. So as x approaches zero from the left, uh, the graph approaches infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, it approaches the line y equals to one. All right. Now, this is the line y equals to negative one. Uh, also, uh, to the right of zero, it approaches infinity, okay? And to the left of negative three, to the left of three, sorry, it approaches negative infinity. So x approaches three from the left, it negative infinity. So I can do it like this, okay? So to the right of zero, when x approaches zero from the right, it approaches infinity. When x approaches three from the left, it approaches negative infinity. And notice here that the graph intersects the two horizontal asymptotes, which is possible. Okay, now three from the right, three from the right, the function goes to infinity. And when x goes to infinity, it approaches the line y equals negative one. So I can do it like this. So now <clears throat> when x approaches infinity, the graph approaches y equals, approaches negative one. <clears throat> and when x approaches three from the right, the graph approaches infinity. So all of the conditions are satisfied in this graph. So this is a possible graph of f of x. To guess the value when the limit, e, uh, uh, when x approaches infinity, we can replace x by large numbers, okay? You can start by whatever, 10, 20, 30, 40, and go on, okay? You can start from 50, 60, 70, 50, 100, 150, as you wish, okay? until you reach, uh, uh, you conv you, you'll be convinced, you reach, okay, a uh, decision between, uh, you, you, you reach a decision that, yeah, the limit is, goes to this, the function approaches this number. So if you try uh, large numbers here, you will notice that this limit is, is zero because actually uh, x square, uh, x square goes like this while two to the power x goes like this. Uh, two to the power x, uh, when x approaches infinity, it goes much faster to infinity. 
So at infinity, 2 to the power x would be much larger than x squared, and the limit will go to 0. Evaluate the limit and justify the steps. So you can always uh, try to replace x by infinity here. So you will get uh, infinity over infinity. So because usually at infinity, x will not has an influence like x squared. x squared has the biggest influence here. So that's why I can evaluate this limit by taking the highest power in the numerator over the highest power in the denominator and neglect all the other terms. So here x squared cancels with x squared and you will have the limit of 2 over 5 when x approaches infinity and the limit would be 2 over 5 because this is just a constant. Here also uh, you can replace x by infinity. You notice that x cube is the highest power here and you will have actually infinity over infinity also. If you replace x by infinity then this is infinity and x cube will give you infinity here so it's infinity over infinity. And once you have infinity over infinity, you can take the highest power in the uh, numerator over the highest power in the denominator, which is x cube. And you can neglect all the other terms. x cube cancels with x cube, and you will have the limit of square root of 9, which is uh, 3. Also here, it doesn't really uh, matter if x if t goes to infinity or negative infinity. Uh, in the numerator, I'll have uh, infinity. In the denominator, I'll have negative infinity. So I can uh, choose the highest power up, take it, and neglect the others. And also the highest power here is t cube. But now... Uh, I have t square up and t cube down, so I'll have 3 over t, because 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay, so I have t, t here, t, 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 so 3 over t. Now, if you replace t by negative infinity, then you will have 3 over infinity or 3 over negative infinity, and that's 0. Any number uh, divided by infinity is just uh, 0. Here, also, uh, 4 and 2 really do not do anything when x approaches infinity, just constants. Uh, so if you replace x by infinity, you will get negative square root of infinity, which is infinity over infinity. So I can just deal with the highest powers. Negative, which is here in this case, x to the power half is the highest power. So these would be cancelled and the limit would be negative uh, 1. Uh, the same here, uh, I'll have infinity times infinity over infinity. So everything will give you infinity over uh, infinity. So you search for the highest power in the numerator and the highest power in the denominator. Well, you can expand these uh, two brackets, multiply, and you get four terms. But what would be the highest power if you multiply these uh, if you expand this this product, well, the highest power will come from uh, multiplying u squared times 2u squared. You will get 2 times u to the power 4. This would be the term with the highest power in the numerator. And here, when you expand this, the term with the highest power would be u squared to the power 2, which is u to the power 4. And these two will be cancelled, and the limit would be uh, 2. Here also, uh, notice that x to the uh, negative infinity to the power 6 is infinity, square root of infinity. So this will give you infinity. And here, x to the power infinity, uh, uh, this is negative. So it would be negative times negative positive. So it will give you infinity over infinity. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, but in this case, uh, it would be infinity because negative infinity to the power 3 all is negative infinity and there is a minus outside so it would be positive infinity so again i can just deal with terms of the highest power uh, so i take square root 
of 4x to the power 6 over uh, negative x cube. And now uh, I have to uh, pay attention that square root of 4 is 2, but square root of x to the power 6 is absolute value of x cube. And this is very important because uh, uh, x cube could be positive or negative, and we, no, we do not need, we do not want the square root to be negative. So we have to put absolute uh, value over negative x cube. And now x goes to negative infinity, which means x is negative. So when x is negative, absolute value of x cube would be negative x cube because x is negative, x cube would be negative, and negative x cube would be positive in this case. So remember, absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is negative because we always need absolute value to be positive. So if x itself is negative, we need to multiply x by a minus sign to make it positive. So negative x in this case is positive. For example, if you talk about absolute value of negative 2, it would be negative negative 2, so you will make it 2. So x is negative 2, so a negative x is positive in this case. So x cubed cancels with x cubed. Actually, negative x cubed cancels with negative x cubed, and the limit would be 2. Uh, let us look to this additional exercise. Now, if you if t is infinity, I'll have 25 infinity, so plus 2, so this will give you infinity, and here I have infinity. Well, infinity minus infinity uh, is an indeterminate form. Uh, so, indeterminate form. So, before doing anything, I cannot do anything here. To find this limit, I have to change it to infinity over infinity, so I can work with it. Uh, and to change it to infinity over infinity, the, you need to multiply by the conjugate. So 25t squared plus 2, uh, the conjugate of these two terms would be by changing the sign in the middle. So we will have u minus v times u plus v. And then we when we multiply them, we will get u square minus v square, and when we square the square root, we will get rid of the square root. Uh, and that's, that's why we change the sign in the middle. So if we multiply these uh, terms or these two fractions, the numerator times the numerator will give you u square minus v square which is 25 t square over the denominator these two cancels and i'll have two over this one and now when i replace t by infinity i have two over this will give you infinity plus infinity and infinity plus infinity is just infinity so two over infinity is zero so this limit would be zero. Uh, here, if you replace x by negative infinity, notice that, notice that, uh, if I ask you to find the limit when t approaches infinity of 25 t squared plus two, okay, uh, plus five t not minus all right not my minus then remark you can say this is a remark uh, if you replace t by infinity here you will get 25t squared plus 2 this is infinity plus infinity so you can say that immediately the answer here is infinity you don't have the infinity minus infinity term so you do not multiply by the conjugate or anything. Immediately, the limit would be infinity. Although if you multiply by the conjugate, you will get a number over zero and it will go to infinity.
So here, if you replace x by negative infinity, this would be infinity, square root of infinity is infinity, and minus 2 times minus infinity is negative infinity. So put in your mind, if this is a plus, the answer would be infinity. But this is minus, so it makes minus infinity minus infinity. And once you have infinity minus infinity, you need to change it to infinity over infinity. So you multiply by the conjugate of these two terms. And the conjugate is to change the sign in the middle. And now when we multiply, we get uh, 4 u square minus v square. So 4x square plus 3x minus 4x square over the denominator. Okay, minus 2x. Now these two cancels. And now when I replace x by negative infinity, I'll have 3 times negative infinity, that's negative infinity. And here I'll have infinity, because this is x squared, so infinity. And minus 2 times negative infinity is positive 2 times infinity, so it's infinity plus infinity. So actually, I'll have infinity over infinity here. So infinity over infinity means now I can take the highest power in the numerator and the highest power in the denominator. So I have only 3x in the numerator. But in the denominator, I have square root of 4x squared, and this is actually power 1. Uh, then minus 2x is also there. Why? Because they have the same power. This is x squared, but to the power half, so I'll have the same power, okay? And now pay attention that x goes to negative infinity. So let me write it. 3x over square root of 4 is 2. And square root of x squared is absolute value of x. Don't forget absolute value of x. Okay. So, but x goes to negative infinity. This means that x is negative. And we have just seen that if x is negative, then the absolute value of x would be negative x. So this would be the limit of 3x over negative 2x minus 2x is negative 4x. x cancels with x, and the limit would be negative 3 over 4. Here, if you replace x by infinity, e to the power infinity is infinity. So I'll have negative infinity over infinity because two times e to the power infinity is infinity times two infinity plus one infinity. So I will multiply or immediately I can take the highest power in the numerator and the highest power in the denominator. And when these two cancels, the limit is just negative half. Notice that if I want to find the limit here, when x approaches negative infinity, all right, then I will have 1 minus e to the power negative infinity over 1 plus 2 times e to the power negative infinity. And notice that e to the power negative infinity uh, is just 0. So this would be 1 over 1 minus 0 over 1 plus 2 times 0. So the limit would be 1. So this function has two horizontal asymptotes, y equals to negative half and y equals to 1. Find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of each curve. All right. To find the horizontal asymptote, I find the limit when x approaches infinity. Well, infinity or negative infinity here, in fact, there is no difference between them because both will give me infinity over infinity in the numerator. Okay. Negative infinity over negative infinity, it would be also infinity over infinity. This means I can take the highest power up and the highest power down 
and this means that the limit is 4 and y equals to 4 is the equation of the horizontal asymptote. For the vertical asymptotes, uh, negative 3 is the zero of the denominator and it's a candidate of the vertical asymptote. So let us find the limit of 5 plus 4x over x plus 3 when x approaches negative 3 from the right. Well, if you replace x by negative 3, you will have 5 minus 12. So this is negative 7 uh, over 0. So negative 7 over 0 would be positive or negative infinity. So to find out whether it's positive or negative infinity, when we approach from the right, okay, negative 3 from the right, this means we need a number greater than negative 3. So let me replace x by negative 2.9. If I replace x by negative 2.9, I'll have plus in the denominator and minus in the denominator in the, in the numerator. So the limit would be minus over plus, so negative infinity. So the limit when x approaches negative 3 from the right would be negative uh, infinity. You can always check by the calculator and make sure that uh, really when you replace x by negative 2.9 here, the answer of this quantity would be negative. Also, the limit of x uh, when x approaches negative 3 from the left of 5 plus 4x over x plus 3, we have seen that uh, it's something, it's a number over 0. So all what we are interested in is to find out whether the limit is positive or negative infinity. So we choose a number less than negative 3. Let us say negative 3.1. In this case, the denominator would be negative and the numerator is negative. So the limit would be infinity. So this proves that the line x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote of this function. Here to find the equations of the horizontal asymptotes, I find the limit when x approaches positive and negative infinity, but here, in fact, there is no difference because this is x4, this is x4, so you will have infinity over infinity, infinity over minus infinity, actually, in this case. So I can uh, take the highest power in the numerator and the highest power in the de denominator. Or you can divide by x to the power 4 uh, up and down if you like. So I'll have x to the power 4 and here negative x to the power 4. They cancel and y equals negative 1 is an equation of a horizontal asymptote. Now for the candidates of the vertical asymptotes, the zeros of the denominator. So to find the zeros of the denominator, I take x squared as a common factor. And then solving this equation, I'll have either x is 0 or x squared is 1. So x is positive or negative 1. So I have three possible, uh, three candidates for vertical asymptotes. So let me find the limit when x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x to the power 4 over x squared minus x to the power 4. Now, if we replace x by 0, I'll get 1 over 0. So 1 over 0, the answer could be positive or negative infinity. So let us find out whether it's positive or negative infinity. Now, approach 0 from the right. So point 1, replace uh, uh, x by point 1, all right? So the numerator would be positive and the denominator would be also positive because 0.1 to the power 2 is greater than 0.1 to the power 4. So the answer would be infinity. While limit when x approaches 0 from the left of uh, 1 plus x to the power 4 over x squared minus x to the power 4, we have seen that it's 1 over 0. So if we replace now x by a number less than 0, well, less than 0, 
for example, let us say negative 0.1, okay? If we put negative 0.1, in fact, there is no difference because this is raised to the power 2 raised to the power 4. So this would be positive and the numerator would be positive and the limit will remain a positive infinity. Uh, so we are sure now that the line x equals to 0 is a vertical asymptote. What about uh, x equals to 1? Let us approach 1 from the right. Well, if I replace x by 1, I'll have 2 over 0. So I'm sure now that it's a vertical asymptote, and the answer is positive or negative infinity. I uh, replace x by 1.1. A number greater than uh, 1 and I raise uh, when I replace x by 1.1 I find that the numerator is positive while 1.1 square is less than 1.1 to the power 4 so the denominator is negative and the answer is negative infinity while when x approaches 1 from the left uh, I will replace x here by a number less than 1 which is for example 0.9 okay so 0 0.9 uh, 1 plus 0 0.9 to the power 4 over 0 0.9 square minus 0 0.9 to the power 4 uh, well the answer would be positive so it's the answer the limit is positive infinity because 0 0.9 square is uh, greater than 0 0.9 to the power 4 and the numerator is always positive in this case. All right, so we are sure now that the line x equals to 1 is a vertical asymptote. Let us uh, check negative 1. So what, what about the line x equals to negative 1? Again, if you replace x by negative 1, you will have 2 over 0. So you are sure that the limit is uh, either infinity or negative infinity, and the line x equals to negative 1 is a vertical asymptote. So actually, these are the equations of the vertical asymptotes. Uh, if I replace a number to the right of negative 1, okay, so uh, let us say negative 0.9. So negative 0.9 is exactly similar to 0.9. The, the minus sign will not make a difference because we have x squared and x to the power 4. So the limit here would be infinity. And when we approach negative 1 from the left and use negative 1.1, 1 .1, uh, we will get negative infinity. This number would be negative. So these are the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of this function. Here, uh, let us find the equation of the horizontal asymptotes. Here, there is a difference between when x approaches infinity and when x approaches negative infinity because e to the power infinity is infinity while e to the power negative infinity is zero. So if I replace x by infinity, I'll have infinity over infinity. This means I can deal with the terms with the highest power immediately. So these two would be canceled and the line y equals to two is a horizontal asymptote of this function. Now, if I want to find the limit when x approaches negative infinity of this function, okay, then if we replace x by negative infinity, I'll have 2 times e to the power negative infinity, e to the power negative infinity minus 5. Well, e to the power negative infinity is 0. So I'll have 0 over 0 minus 5. So the answer is 0. And the line y equals to 0 is also a horizontal asymptote. So this function has two horizontal asymptotes. Now the zero of the denominator would be a, a possible a choice for the vertical asymptote. So a, a, if you put ex minus 5 equals to 0 and you take 5 to the other side, and then apply len to both sides, then this line is a possible vertical asymptote. Let us find the limit when x approaches ln5 from the right and from the left for the function 2e x over 
dx minus 5. Now you can use the calculator, find ln 5. For example, ln 5 would be 1.6, and you can replace x by 1.5 and check here whether this is positive or negative. Because if you just replace ln 5, x by ln 5, e to the power ln 5 is 5, so I'll have 10 over e to the power ln 5 is 5, 5 minus 5 is 0, so I have 10 over 0, so actually this is an equation of the vertical asymptotes. But to find the limit from the right and from the left, then I have to replace uh, x by a number greater than ln 5, for example, 1.7, 1.8, okay? But I'll do it uh, like this, without using a calculator, because I know the graph of ln, and if this is 5 and this is 6 and this would be uh, 4 for example okay this is 4 so the function is increasing here so len uh, a number greater than len 5 would be len 6 so if i use len 6 i'll have 2 e len 6 over e len 6 minus 5 this would be uh, 2 times 6 12 over 1 so this is positive so the limit would be infinity while if i uh, approach ln5 from the left uh, i'll also have 10 over 0 so i know that the answer is positive infinity or negative infinity i replace here x by ln4 because ln4 is less than ln5 and uh, having ln4 e ln4 is 4 so 4 minus 5 this is negative well, this is always positive, so the answer would be negative infinity. So I know that the line x equals ln5, for example, for this function, it is about 1.6, so it's somewhere here. When x approaches ln5 from the right, the graph goes to infinity, and when x approaches ln5 from the left, the graph goes to negative infinity. This is what, to, what we understand from these limits. I hope you enjoyed uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes, uh, study hard and have a nice time.